Hello, everybody, and welcome back for another webinar featuring Podio. For this one in particular, we're focusing for Podio experts, how to automate your client intake process and more with our wonderful partner, Joel Ordesky. Uh, as always, my name is Mac Flintosh. I'm the Podio Solutions Engineer. I've kind of been leading a large amount of these webinar series, so hopefully we're not too sick of my voice yet. Um, and as my uh, counterpart here, I have Kelly Markoff, who's our Podio Support Specialist. Kelly, can you say hi? Hello. <laughs> and again, our wonderful partner, uh, the private guru, Joel Ordesky. Hi. Welcome, Joel. So nice to have you here. Um, yeah. So today we're going to do how to automate your client intake process and more. Uh, looking to just sort of set up the account again for that best performance to make sure that you're getting from point A to point B in the smoothest way possible. So that can be anything from navigating and editing dashboards, creating client users, you know, enabling cloud connections and third-party integration. So a lot of really cool things that kind of fall outside of just Podio and what Podio can be when you're taking it to that next level. And as always, we just want to give a big thank you for everyone's time. I love seeing the amount of interest we've had coming in for these. Love people wanting to learn more about the platform. And again, just very thankful for our wonderful partner network for them being able to take some time out of the day, come join us and really show that potential of what they've been able to create. So with Joel, we will go ahead and pass that to you. All right, so we're talking about getting data into Podio and there's various methods. Um, so obviously you can email stuff into Podio, which is really useful. You can um, do direct entry and you can do webhook. So these are three ways of getting data in during an, a, an intake of information. So, you know, there are services that will email data in. You can have obviously your clients do a, a manually data entry, whether that's your internal clients or your external clients. And we're going to cover webhooks, which is kind of a, a sophisticated way of doing it. Let's say that a webhook is really a computer emailing a computer. If if humans email each other, uh, computers send webhooks to each other. Um, so. Um, and for clarification, Joel, so that would be like if I'm working on Podio and I need something from Podio to trigger something on a different site or vice versa, just to clarify for everyone else in the room. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, um, uh, you know, in this case, we have our guy here on the right who just does not like filling out this really long form. And, and one of the things about intakes and other sorts of things where you have to have collect a lot of information is that if it becomes a really long form, if it's got information, they've got to think about it. If they have to get information from someone else. Um, you're going to stop down They're They're not going to complete it. You're not going to know they even started the process. So we want to sort of change up this pattern of behavior. And because our goal is to make sure that we know at each step of the of the path, where we are with this intake, whether it's internal, external or whatever. So our goal is to capture a minimum of data first and then get the details. And by this, I mean, that we really just want inform one basic data only. We want name, contact info, and the critical data. And here you, and then on submit it, that's going to send a Podio and redirect to what I'm going to call form two. Um, so here you see, I'm collecting name, phone, email. Um, uh, uh, I'm asking, you know, what sort of person this is, who's completing out the form. I'm asking for some residence information and state. This is probably the maximum that you could expect reasonably to grab on a, on an initial form. Um, now, um, I want to talk about how this stuff comes in. So we talked about a webhook and I'm going to show a little bit more, but just a little tiny taste behind the scenes. This is the top of a Podio workflow automation webhook flow. You can see that a bunch of information has flown into this little box here. Um, uh, the data comes in from whatever your source is. In this case, I'm using an external tool called Cognito to intake this case information. And then, so then what happens is then with this information, I have a much more sophisticated flow that is creating both a contact there you see at the top and then down at the bottom you can see it's actually making a new lead and it creates my lead entry this somewhat blurry image of a, of a lead box um that just got created for um 
uh, Sleeping Beauty here, which will become a little clearer in a moment. And um, as we go to the next screen. So here's our lead. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is a good practice, probably a best practice, is really while the temptation is to put to put on your um, uh, 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 system to put you know the name, the email, the phone directly into your lead as as a name field, an email field, a phone field. I, I don't. I like to see people use a contact app. So here you can see I've made a primary contact for Sleeping Beauty, which is Rip Van Winkle. Um, the advantage here is that I have a little more information. I know that he's a type, he's an SSB, I know his phone number and his email. And um, if I have multiple references or entries by this person, they'll all be linked to the same contact record. There's a lot of strength in that. And even the state, now I could have just said California, I could have done a category field for California, that would have been all fine. However, the nice thing here is that by using uh, a state DB, I was able to store some information under California to say that, okay, California is a no transfer penalty state. It has yes, future medical, and it has a bunch of other data that our staff can then go reference to say, what are the restrictions in California for this sort of thing? So there's strength in that. Um, so don't shy away from using related apps. In fact, it's one of the most powerful things in Bodio and um, it can really be leveraged for great, great work. Um, and Joel, really quickly, just for anyone yeah. who's a little bit newer to the platform. So you had mentioned like, because they've selected California, it's routing to that specific relationship. That's just a really good example of how you can leverage those conditional workflows of saying, if one field equals to something, I want X, Y, Z to occur. So just for anyone who hasn't been in Podio as long, it's just a way to look at it within the terms you may be more familiar with. So the key here now, since we've captured our initial form data and you see this over here, is that we need some way to connect form one and form two. And depending upon which method you're using, whether you're using an external form tool like Cognito with a webhook the way I have, or whether you're using Podio inherent web forms, you need some way to say the first thing belongs to the second thing. Email address is always a great unique identifier for people. Um, phone numbers a little less, so names not at all. People type their names different ways. They mistype their names. Uh, uh, I wouldn't use a name. So here you see my short form to my long form, and I'm going to show you that we've used a couple different ways to link these things. So um, I'm using a, a, a methodology of, of designing a URL for a, a web form with pre-population. Now in this case, I'm using Cognito forms and um, all right, and you can see that that I've cognito form here that I've actually embedded after the form name, I've embedded um, the incoming form entry ID. That was the ID number that I got dynamically over here from the first form. That's gonna allow me, since I stored that when I wrote it to Podio, I said, okay, this is you know form 36 entry number one. That allows me to then when form two comes in, it says, hey, this original entry was 36 entry one, I can then line it all together. Um, you also note that I used a who value. This is, um, I'm doing a little ranking scoring thing here, which I'm gonna use later to say who's gonna handle this matter. So based upon who they said they were, I gave a value and I'm gonna use that value to do a little qualification ranking here a little bit later. So um, now on Podio, if you're using straight Podio forms, um, you would have done um, you would have done a uh, 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 you would have done this, and so Podio has this methodology where again I can pre-populate. Here I've used the email address as my pre-populate to to go with. Now one of the important things is Podio can't dynamically on uh, completion of form one it can't dynamically make a form uh, to reference form two. So in this case you might say, okay, Podio workflow automation when form one comes in is gonna email our guy, uh, thank you saying, hey, we got your request, um, please fill out form two. And he gives them this link, which when he clicks, tells me that he, who he was and that his who value was three so that I can do that. Um, the help uh, 
uh, URLs are here so that if you want to read more about pre-populating URLs, it's a very useful thing to do. Allows you to work smart um, and rather than hard when working with forms, both Podio and Cognito, it's very useful. So these two help files, which we'll make sure that are in the links are there for you. Um, so now again, we're to our long form. Now, when, once the long forms filled out, as I said to you, I did a little ranking uh, thing. So I ranked both on form one and I did some qualified ranking on form two. This is a value of, uh, that I was able to do this incognito. And again, because I was using Cognito Forms, I was able to leverage a dynamic uh, redirect on submit. So in this case, based on the ranking, I either submitted to a Calendly for my senior staff or a Calendly for my junior staff. It looks the same to the, to the client. They don't see the difference, but it does change which of my staff is going to handle the, uh, uh, the, the event. And then the final thing, and this is really gravy on top, is I'm going to use Calendly, which is a great service, has a great API. Again, here we have our little API flow. As the event went into Calendly, yes, it's scheduled onto the individual's calendars, but it, um, it allowed me to take that information back into Podio so that I know that something uh, that they actually went through and scheduled their, their call with us. So I've now created a, a meeting record. So here's Sleeping Beauty's lead. And you can see here at the bottom that um, because it came into my meeting event, it it basically, I got this uh, event notification that a meeting was sent. So now I can say, all right, if, if he only ever said he filled out form one and he gave up, I someone's informed and says, hey, we have a form one, but we don't have a form two. If he fills out form one and form two, but never sets a meeting, we know when we go into it and say, hey, we need to call this guy and schedule a meeting because they didn't schedule a meeting with us. And if we get the meeting because we get notified by Calendly through the API that, or through the webhook that it is, then we know that, that the whole thing, the whole cycle has been completed and the meeting's been set up and our staff will update the lead at the conclusion of the meeting. Um, as far as the, what the sort of overall benefit for being able to kind of leverage these things together, do you have an estimate on about how much time this might save for any sort of intake or request coming through? Um, I think it's, it's, I mean, I don't know that time saving is the issue here. I think the issue is that you don't drop balls there. What I find is that, um, I just ran a campaign for one of my clients where we sent out you know and what basically happened is that they had a ton of clicks on a form in an email to inviting people for interest a lot of people looked at the website a lot of people looked at the calendly link but not a lot of people actually entered the top of the sales pipe so the nice thing here is that if you can engage them enough to do a very simple form one okay because a Calendly, if you say, hey, well, but Joel, I don't need that. The Calendly is everything. If they schedule an appointment, they're they're qualified and if they're not, they're not. That's not true. Setting an appointment to speak with someone is very sort of intimidate, intimidating and in your face. Filling out a form where all you've given is your name and a little bit of information is less intimidating. You know, Carrot does this. Uh, Carrot is a real estate website tool. And Carrot does a great thing where they actually put up on the website, they say, give us your address for a quote and all they ask for is an address and an email address nothing more you don't have to give the phone number you think you're totally safe but that if you fill out a form one with an, a physical address and an email address they can at least reach out and send an offer even if you do none of the other questions and they can actually skip trace to get that phone number if they wish to so it's very clever when you lower the intimidation of form one you really can scoop in more possibilities. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think also to echo that, um, we mentioned about not dropping balls, which I think is a really, really important part to highlight. Um, when you have ones that have come in, but maybe haven't gone to that next level, you can even do things like set date triggers based off of different statuses to put those into sort of a follow-up thread. So that way you can make sure that people who have gone through that first step or not completely going off the radar, even if they haven't followed through with those additional steps. Yeah, 
No, I think that's that's the important piece. You don't want to. It's the the potentially lost one that is 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 really the expensive part here. Um, and you also don't spend your time wasting because there also is, from a time point of view, you can you can sub qualify your your leads. In other words, someone only does form one is worth so much effort. Someone who does form one and form two is worth more effort. The person who does form one, form two, and sets a calendar. That person's really committed to your services and is someone that you should be paying a lot of attention to, because they went through all they went through all the friction. So clearly, their motive have a high motivation level. So it also gives you that ability to measure how motivated this lead is. All right. Um, I also prepared um, onto a sort of different approach here and i'm going to go full screen on this Let's see so this is um uh, an example of, of vendor management which is something that a lot of companies deal with and in today's world um it's become more complicated with having to do i mean it used to be just vendors and ndas and things like that now you have you know SOC 2 reports uh, data processing agreements, a lot of other things that need to be handled for getting a vendor onboarded with a client, um, with a company. So um, this is a little sort of vendor management demonstration. It's a very simplified thing. So we have our vendor management uh, thing. We we have only really the staff that we want to have in here. So this isn't we're not we don't have all of our staff in here. We just have the needed staff in here now. We have two web forms. These are Podio web forms in this case. We have the new vendor request. So I'm going to show what this, and this is something that you would give out to your staff, your sales staff or your staff as a whole. So if they want a vendor to be considered, they're going to fill out this form. So um, uh, the, the guru companies, uh, we have a staff member, Bugs Bunny. He would like us to uh, consider bringing Acme tools on as a vendor. Um, and so he's filling out the form and he's given us a company website. He says his representative, Wiley Coyote, and um, he's given us an email address for this and he's going to hit submit, right? So as he hits submit on this process, um, what's happening um, behind the scenes is, I'm going to refresh. So our thing, our, the request was made here, but it actually immediately created, it looked for a dupe. It, so I do do a little dupe prevention, um, but if it doesn't see it, if it had seen a dupe, it would have tagged it as a dupe, but here it didn't. So it then creates the, what we're gonna call the core vendor record, right? So this is legal department is impending on this um, and it's, it's sitting here as a thing. One of the things that did happen as soon as this was created um, in ShareFile, we, um, through Podio Workflow Automation, um, of course, it likes to make a fool out of me. It didn't do it, um, but it would have made a folder that is like this one that is uh, for this. And of course, it didn't do it, which, of course, Never work with computers, small animals, or small children's during children during demos because they will fail you every single time. Um, well, let's see if that shows up. All right, so go, moving on though, it it uh, it should have made the file. Now I can go um, and say that I want the NDA to be requested. So legals looked at this and they would like an NDA requested. Well, while that's catching up, what are some other examples of forms that could be created in this sort of scenario when we're talking a little bit more about like a legal department as opposed to a legal firm? Request for a SOC 2 to send the SOC 2 compliance report out. Um, HIPAA, uh, a HIPAA sign off. Um, so there are forms for HIPAA that need to be signed and they, you just they don't sign them for everyone. Um, uh, requesting a vendor to do a data processing agreement with you, which is something you might need to maintain your SOC 2 status or your ISO status is to, to get, you know, compliance from all of your vendors for these varying things. So I really sort of made it in such a way that it was um, supposed to uh, give it you those, those possibilities. 
Yeah, awesome. That's a great point. And I also see in your statuses that you have the NDA re-requested. What would that sort of scenario be where we need to be in that sort of re-request flow? So let's say that 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 um let's say that that you know our person said, Hey, I'm dealing with Frank, but Frank, when he gets the request, goes, Hey, dude, I, I'm I I'm not allowed to sign anything. I'm just a sales guy. You need to get my boss to sign these documents. So then you come in here and you change the um, the representative, or you you make a change in here to who's going to be getting these documents, um, and the um, uh, that would would do it. Um, so you know, it's just a matter of of then you'd hit re-request so that it triggers the NDA out. Example as well. I see that that internal department is a bit, it looks to be a relationship field. And is that a nice way where you can kind of direct which department internally would be responsible for that request? Absolutely. Instead of using a category, again, I used a, I used a, um, a, a relationship field. Again, this gives me an advantage to say, all right, this is, this is this department. And it shows me that it is a, the manager is Tom Market and what his email address is. And it just gives me more um, yeah, relationships and everything else. Let's just look at the, always back yourself up. Let's go look at the, um, just for purposes of the demo, let's go look at um, hit, hit Them Hard, which is the vendor I was testing with last night. So here you can see that, that um, going back, you can see that the, here you actually see me do the NDA re-requested as the, it creates the NDA, um, it created an NDA and then, so here's my unsigned NDA basically, right? So as I hit the button, the unsigned NDA was created. Um, this is a, a Podio created document. This is a, a PDF that Podio actually created. And you can see, I have a little bit of code here that, that lets me, that's where my signature is gonna go for this. And then fun little once... inside tip while you have that up. If you don't want that text tag or that signature tag to show in the PDF uh, on the generation itself, if you just highlight that and make that text font white, some white. people just don't like the confusion of that. So that just kind of makes it a little bit of a cleaner look, but still allows for that either text tag, date tag, or signature tag to appear in the right signature document. Which is really useful if you're gonna if some people are gonna manually sign them. So here is here this is with with the, the signature from them and the right signature certificate, um, which is really valuable because legally you need sort of a certificate like this to make these sort of things uh, binding. All right, so that went out. Then what you see here is that I actually made a request. So going on to the next piece of it is that, that at a point you say, all right, I need to have a SOC 2 report sent so in order to do that, there was a form that we saw back here on the front page and you go document request. And again, you'd select your vendor. Now this is your internal staff doing it. They'd select the vendor. They would um, uh, choose, um, you know, what thing they want done, whether they want the SOC 2 report sent or they want the data processing agreement run. And um, based upon doing that in the form, then what ends up happening is that a uh, request item gets made. When this item is made, it basically triggers off the events. And again, so in this case, the, um, uh, uh, you know, a request was for a copy of Private Guru SOC 2 report, a copy has been placed in your share file folder that was created when you were approved. We're doing this because we're using share file so that we're not sending what is considered a sensitive document across. So um, it would get put into here, all right? And then um, the last one is the data processing agreement. Now, the data processing agreement was is a more complicated uh, uh, form and it needs to be signed by them. So again, the data processing form is sent out and you get the signed version back. In this case, but we didn't create this in Podio, it was actually stored in right signature as a template. And here you can see that the um, the date has been filled in, the company name has been filled in. We filled those in from the flow 
Um, but there are other pieces and parts in here that are, um, uh, so like here, the, 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 they actually put their own title in, they actually typed their signature date in, we didn't pre-fill that for them. So the whole thing was completed. And again, once this is completed, it's put into the share file folder so that it, it is there for them. So it's part of this process of, of managing these varying requests. And this can be both time consuming for legal staffs or for uh, vendor management staffs. And it also is a drop ball problem is that, you know, because what happens is you're in the middle of doing something during the day, someone calls up and says, oh, we need a SOC 2, send them out, hit them hard, or we need a to initiated a, a data processing agreement with this vendor. And it, it's very time consuming to get all these little, oh, by the way, oh, by the way, oh, by the way, where you can just say to them, okay, great guys, these are your two links and we're going to give you, you know, we publish them somewhere and we say, hey, you go ahead and do this. And if they call us up and they say, hey, I'm doing a document request, but my vendor, my vendor isn't showing up in the drop down, then it's like, well, but they're not they're not approved therefore because they would show up in the drop down if they were approved so there's advantage to that sort of 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 work flow and i think that also so. really echoes to accountability for the whole team so it's not necessarily sending out a quick email of hey i need this it's there's a process that has to be followed so that there's really really good sort of visibility and tracking about where any status for a request would be sitting at any point in time right so that's sort of the whole little uh, the bit of this demo. I'll, oh, let me show a couple little elements. There is, um, I often use these roles apps. So a roles app is a way to dynamically create. So in this case, when the NDA is signed or when the SOC 2 was signed, I'm notifying my te digital test dummy, FERCB, that it was done, right? However, um, this allows the staff without having to go back to a Podio partner like me and say, hey, I now need to notify this person or this person or Furby's on vacation. He's, by the way, always on vacation. Um, so I'm going to change this and I want to make it so that Kelly is actually getting those for this week because Furby's uh, a deadbeat not doing his job. I've just easily changed the notification. So having these roles app that says, okay, this is the person who's notified when this happened. This is the person who's notified when that happens can be very valuable. Now, obviously you can put on to a record that the person in charge of this vendor is so-and-so that's great until those people leave. And then you have 25 records with someone assigned to them, but using a roles can be very a dynamic way that staff themselves can help maintain in one large group who's notified. And by the way, avoids that dreaded group inbox because nothing's worse than a dreaded group inbox because then it's like who's really responsible i don't know we sent it to the group inbox no one dealt with it but it's not my fault i'm just one of 50 other people in the group inbox no completely um, agree and we see that quite a bit as sort of solutions that people are trying to solve when coming to podio so i'm glad you pointed that out um i do just want to say i love that you went straight to deadbeat as opposed to on vacation or on a parental leave <laughs> but it's another way to think of it if you need to replace somebody who's on a temporary leave i had a coach who, an executive coach who used to say get hit by the pie truck i finally changed it to won the lottery and left um as a better way of saying someone who uh, left the company um stored images this is again um, I needed a place to put my SOC 2 report so that that I could grab it when necessary. Again, this allows staff to update this when we get to 2024 and the SOC 2 report gets updated. It's, it's not a big deal. Um, by the way, this is a much missed feature, which I really love, is that you don't need to just add another file. If I'm replacing this, I can just go replace here and put the file on top. That doesn't lose the original file. It'll actually leave that original file, but it will um, do it. And then in my instructions in Podio Workflow Automation, I actually just say, take the most recent file from this record. And that's what I'm sending out when I send out a SOC 2 report. So it's a useful way of either whether you're doing images or you're doing files that can be a, a very, um, effective way of storing stuff somewhere that 
um, you know, doesn't require you floating because if you float this stuff out on a website, ultimately your web developer will delete your folder and one day people will tell you that nothing is going out and you're like, where's all the stuff I stored up on the web server? And it's like, well, we got a new web guy. He deleted your stuff or he moved it or he changed it or whatever the case may be. So this is a great way to avoid that problem and keep it in Podio where you actually have control over it. So um, that also was was done here. So um, um, the last thing I wanted to just kind of peek at and show, um, uh, I did say that I was going to demonstrate a little bit of, of so this is a web hook. Again, I showed this earlier, um, but I want to show you just how simple this really can be is that um, I'm going to just grab this URL and, uh, but just to show you, there's no mystical magical here. I'm going to go here and I'm going to just go um, name Bugs Bunny. There we go. And email equals Bugs at mailmeter.com. And I could do more and more and more, but I'm just going to do those two. I fire it off the URL off. I come in here, I hit refresh, and you notice that the data has changed. And then from here, you're able to say, okay, every time this comes in, I'm going to do something more effective with the data so i'm going to you know immediately do you know a search and i could say search and i could say search for vendor and i could say uh, uh you know come into my vendor management and look for um you know go in and start looking for something a person in it and do it this way so it's it's there's strength in doing these sorts of things, um, you know, that allow you to do it. And the other thing is using a web form or a, a, a web hook like this. Sometimes, even if you do a Podio web form and it's not a web hook, it's just on create of a Podio web form. If you put it in a bucket on its own, and this would be one thing that I'd say a lot of people don't you see i did this new vendor request this is my form this is my hero source of truth vendor app don't write web forms into your source source of truth you'll just get dupes when somebody fires it twice they, they file it multiple times do it into something like this and then take the time to search for a dupe and make sure that if you already have that vendor in here that you you say to whoever hey we already had that one or notify whoever's in charge of this one. Hey, we got another one with slightly different information, but don't let dupe prevention is a really critical thing in all databases. And I think it gets, you know, people are like, oh, we're not going to worry about that today. We just want to get this started. But then ultimately when they have lots of dupes there, it, it's a huge problem to fix. Yeah, and I'll echo that, especially if you have some sort of a workflow where once a new form is submitted, maybe they're receiving a confirmation of receival email through Podio workflow automation. If they've accidentally submitted it five or six times, they end up with five or six emails. It doesn't give that like personalized feeling that you're working with the company. You do feel like you're working with a bit of a bot. So uh, to Joel's point, I think preventing of those duplicates is a really powerful thing that people sometimes overlook that can make a big difference in the experience for your clients. I mean, that's the most fantastic thing about uh, Podio at all is that every change is logged. There is no, there is no hiding. Um, uh, I often, you know, have someone go, oh, this didn't work. Um, and you then go in and you're like, oh, look, you changed it right here. But every change is noted, um, referenced by time up to 5,000 changes. Uh, it's 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 impossible to hide that something was changed i mean even when sometimes when something's deleted like if uh if like here you can see that i had referenced this from hit them hard twice but if i deleted one of these references there still would be a record that it had been there at one point or another so i mean it's it's really a strong feature is to have that historical knowledge of every change and who did it uh and don't share your passwords don't have do not have you know your junior people who have light logins which is what they should have um so i mean this is this is i say this to clients all the time and they're always a little shocked 
But um, when you invite people to a space, always invite them as a light member if you're premium, because any regular member can export the data out of Podio. So you're you're leaving yourself vulnerable um, to 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 go. Um, Daryl, you just asked is what's Podio workflow automations included in in the um, premium product level. Um, so, you know, light member is that, but what happens is, so they have all these light members and then someone wants to do something that a light member won't want. So rather than bumping their, their, them up temporarily to regular and then remembering to dump them back down, someone just gives away the owner's password um, and says, oh, go log in as me and go do it. And um, I've had one or two clients who actually had disgruntled employees who left, who somehow knew the owner's password and did damage on their way out the door. So that's just never share your password. The way I do, so let's just talk about this is, is you can see that, so with a plus, that means this flow will run on and on create. When an item is created, um, this will trigger. Without the plus, it's when something is updated um, and these orange ones are manual, meaning something else is gonna, gonna trigger them. I often program manuals and then I will have um another flow trigger them because sometimes i'm triggering these by two things so if you take my D, my um nda it's actually created it happens two ways it happens once one way and it happens another so send the nda on create should should trigger this and then if i hit the button it should do it again so if i do this so that's rather than having the code in there twice i only have it once right so let's just take a quick peek at that. This is the one that actually gave me a little grief. Um, and don't be intimidated by this stuff. It's it's literally, you, you know, um, uh, you know, I hate to say this and reveal one of my true secrets, but but um, uh, here, watch, you'll see. Um, I have a little filler here. Wow, I typed that really quick. Um, I don't have these memorized either. I mean, I know them sort of because I use them all the time, but you can have a cheat sheet of about uh, uh, five to 20 uh, formulas that you'll use all the time and they'll get you around most of the things. So don't get intimidated by these little bits of code that you're seeing in my stuff. There's actually an excellent help document that was created years ago that's still out there. Um, and Kelly, if we can find that, include that the basic formula thing. Um, yep. I actually use uh, that. I use that document yeah. all the time personally, so I can have that added to the, the links that we yeah. can send out with the follow-up. It's a great way. So I'm, I'm just cleaning up the date so that it looks like M-D-Y instead of being Y dash year first. So I just made a little change to clean the date up because it's stored in Y dash MD. So I just flipped it around using that formula. And here I'm just breaking out um, emails are actually stored in Podio with other or work or home colon and the email address. And also if there were possibly multiple email addresses. So I'm just literally saying, give me the first email address and give me everything to the right of the colon. Um, is that, oh, and here we see, all right, see there's an error. Uh, those things pop in on you all the time. Okay, so I found an error. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna just go vendor name um, I must have changed the field name at some point. It messed me up. Um, so here is a create a PDF. Again, you can see you can just it's it's what you see is what you get sort of typing. And I've I've used my token selector. Um, that's my highly technical term for that, which allows me to select and find whatever I want in here and put it in. And um, then here's my send item via uh, file via write signature and um, it goes ahead and does this and it sends the most recent .pdf file off. Um, and I could have changed the pattern here if I wanted to, to be, to look for a certain sort of other file. Um, so that's that one. I'll show you the uh, share file add. So here's on when, this is a special flow that's for when something is received in right signature, um, when a signature comes back. Um, so. I basically said, you know, if my NDA status is not already NDA signed, then set it to NDA signed. Um, if it's the NDA or the DPA status is not signed, then make that signed. 
and then it 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 waits 30 seconds and then it it um uh i'm doing something to create a, a folder name i called it file name but it should have been folder name and i'm basically saying all right uh save this item to share file anything with a pattern star dot star to the test folder and the subfolder this and that's really that and then i'm looking again we talked about that role i'm searching the roles i'm looking for the role nda signed and that allows me to find this at mention for which would have been for and is now kelly so i mean this stuff is pretty basic once you get going in it it's a little looks a little intimidating at first but I, I tell you something, I had a client years ago who told me that he was only good at Excel. That was as far as you could ever push him. Um, and he he uh, made a phenomenal Podia workspace with only a little of help from me. She'd call me up every few weeks and he'd go, okay, I'm stuck. And then we'd go through it. This is not hard. It's not brain surgery. If you've got a mind for logical flow of what you want this to do to this to this to this and you understand the game of dominoes or knocking dominoes over you can make all of this work um it, it just looks intimidating but it actually is very very basic very simple um you know again this is when an item was created this was the share file um create thing and then it's it's um it basically again i was making my folder name i was saying all everything to lowercase and i was replacing the spaces with underscores and you know this is pretty straightforward i mean there's nothing this formula the hardest thing about this formula is to remember that it's str to lower because in javascript it's it's in another language it's something else so i have to remember which language i'm in but past that this is there's nothing magical about this language it's it's pretty straightforward um uh and, and and truthfully by the way if you're a fan of chat gbt you can go into chat gbt and actually ask it to make you a formula that changes something from to lowercase and replaces all the spaces with dashes and it'll give you this formula um uh, and so only half joking here i will also say i do go to joel probably once or twice a month is saying hey i'm stuck and <laughs> i've been able to build a lot of this on my own uh, the one thing I did want to point out before we start to wrap up, because it looks like all of our questions have gotten answered, is, uh, Joel, you touched quite a bit on the power of those relationship fields. So one thing I always like to highlight is if you have an app that has multiple relationship fields in it and you need a workflow to generate by pulling information from one of those relationship fields, you want to make sure you use that get referenced action within Podio workflow automation that's gonna allow you to pull all the fields from those additional templates as well. So that way you don't have the same data in every single app you have, but you can still have that seamless flow process. Yeah, and I'd say this to you also is don't be ashamed if if, if nothing else, you could always ask for, um, and they're gonna, uh, Mohammed, they'll, they'll put the link for how to request a Podio partner. But I mean, we do cost, we each charge something, but, um, you know, buying yourself an hour or two of a Podio partner to teach you the basics of Globy Flow. I'm sorry, I want to say Globy Podio workflow automation. Sorry, old habits die hard. Anyway, um, to teach you the basics of Podio workflow automation um, is will really be well worth whatever you end up paying the partner to do that training with you. Um, even basic structure, if you're new to Podio, to be taught basic structure to say that you should use a relationship field here. Um, don't ever in a get reference say both. I mean, there's things like if you say in a in a thing that you, uh, you know, to do the get reference that uh, Mac just referred to, um, you don't ever want to um, do, and I'm just gonna throw one in here just to show what I'm saying. Um, of course I picked a flow that was, but if I do a get reference, so this is the get reference she was talking about. I'm gonna say get reference from department. And I'm gonna say it's, now you have to choose forward or reverse. I can explain that more easily, but don't ever choose both just because you're being lazy. That's that's guaranteed to cause you grief. Find out, in fact, it's easy. Forward, there was something, right? Reverse, there's nothing. So it's it's not hard for me to know that it's forward that I wanted. Um, I could find my way in a dark room to this and, and go from there. So it's, uh, you know, there are things like that that you want to do. Um, 
you know, that just are smarter and easier ways to not make mistakes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joel. We always appreciate your time and expertise. Um, for everyone that's watching, Joel, as you know, is one of our partners. He is a third party um, and you guys can sign up if you need partner help. To kind of clarify, support is always here um, in any geolocation. We can help you out. We are mostly for if you need a push in the right direction or if something's not working or you need some advice for what you're looking for, that we are here for you, absolutely no cost. If you are looking for someone to custom build for you or to write custom calculations and variables, that is when you absolutely wanna sign up for a partner. Yep, and with that being said, Joel, again, thank you for your time. Let's say somebody wanted to get a hold of you. What's the best way they can do that as far as bringing on your services? Um, you, I, I can be emailed at me at privateguru.net that's easy. Um, I have a website, privateguru.net, that has a contact form. Um, uh, you can occasionally find me on the forums here. By the way, I was going to mention the Podio Workflow Automation Forum. Great source of knowledge. Great resource for sure. Stuff. Yeah, great resource. If you're not in it, you should find your way into it if you're going to make anything on your own. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, thank you, everybody, for attending. We had a great turnout today. Joel, again, thank you so much for your time. This was really informational. I'm glad that we were able to show a bit more of that advanced back end to, to more of our customers or people who are interested within Podio. Um, we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. And for everyone else on the call, we should have another webinar for Podio, kind of focusing on what's coming, what's new, that should be mid to late April. So just keep your eyes open for those invitations, get registered, and we'll be happy to see you then. Everyone enjoy the rest of your day.